Recently, I did a Reddit AMA, and there was like hundreds and hundreds of questions. Uh, one of the guy's questions, which I forgot the guy's name, I apologize, but hopefully I'm um, getting this out to you, um, was about S-mount, and his question was about what are the secrets to S-mount, as if there are any. I don't have any secrets for you, but I am gonna show you the way that I kind of like to get to S-mount, and one of the ways that's been you know useful for me in competitions and rolling, and to get into a basic S-mount position, and I'll give you a submission too. So, um, with my assistant, my lovely assistant, Mr. Adam Wilson. He's really excited about this position today. Um, and uh, let's get started. The reason why this is called an S mount is because your legs are gonna be kind of like this. It kind of looks like an S position, okay? Um, an S mount, the S mount's a really nasty position. Puts a lot of pressure on the person and there's not a whole lot that they can do for, uh, you know, once you get there. So let's take a look at it. So when we get to the position here, the way that I like to set up S-mount is by isolating an arm for attack, which will allow me to slide the knee up. Because typically speaking, when you go for an S-mount, what you have to do is you have to start by bringing the knee up, and then the other leg comes out, right? So the problem in most cases to bring that knee up is gonna be the fact that the elbows are down. The elbows are down, you can't bring the knee up. Simple, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by getting down here. I like to go underneath the head, almost always in the the, uh, the, uh, the mountain position because if the person's going to bridge, if I keep his head up off the ground bridge, he can't really get a strong bridge, okay? When his head can drive up and he bridges, that's gonna be more problematic, okay? So from here, a lot of times I'll get here, I like to go right up underneath of the head and I get this curl right here, a little bicep curl action going with my the point of my elbow in the mat. Now, from here, he'll probably keep his arms in and all that stuff and I'm gonna get underneath of his arm and I'm gonna walk 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 and this might take a little bit so don't be in a rush once we get out here we can begin to attack this arm here and just sort of keep it in position go for a key lock or even if you just want to immediately bring it over you can but what we've done now is we bring brung the arm up so what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to bring my knee up to the shoulder as i do that i'm going to pull the other arm up slide the foot up into the shoulder and then we're right here now i'm going to be easy on adam for a second here the basic things that you wanna do is you wanna have this knee up by the shoulder, toes are active, later Brian. Toes are active, this leg is sitting here, and guys, something you should sort of keep in mind, let's turn this way Adam, is that there's a sweet spot for your pressure. That sweet spot is not on the stomach, it's not up on the rib cage, it's right across the midsection here, right where the rib cage tapers down, there you got the, mid, the solar plexus, right? So if you were gonna punch someone, Boom, that's where you're gonna be able to knock the, the wind out of him. But what's cool about this is he can't brace very well here. If I'm sitting on his like stomach, his fascial muscles, Adam's fine, right? Not too bad. If I'm sitting up here on his chest, the rib cage kinda helps out. But once you put your weight right there in the solar plexus, that's your spot. So when we get here, I really wanna focus on having my thigh put maximum pressure right there in that solar plexus here. So it's a lot of weight on him, my toes are barely touching the mat through there just for balance, and I've got a lot of weight on him. It's a really bad position to deal with, okay? So let's go and walk through that again. So I'm here in the position. I go underneath the neck to keep his head up off the ground to, keep the, to mess up his bridge. I work my hand under, okay? So we'll go this way this time, bang. Go underneath, and I'm walking, 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 walking. A lot of times you can do it right, if you just wanna to go to S-mount, you can uh, initiate the S-mount here. A lot of times I really like initiating the arm lock here, like going for like a Kimura, or excuse me, it's key lock, because now his, both of his hands come up, right here, to, he's gonna to try to grab to defend or something like this. That's a very common reaction. So now I can slide this up, boom, and pull myself right into the S-mount here, and now I'm ready to go. Now as far as the submission goes, don't be in any rush here. You're in such a strong position. Take your time. You know, again, we always say jiu-jitsu position before submission. So we can take our time, move the arm out of the way, boom, and get that submission. Think of uh, the position, you know, or the, uh, the idea of position before submission. The way one of my coaches explained it, he said it was, to him, it thought of, he thought of it as like a snake. Right, that like you know, like a, a constrictor that coils around its prey and it slowly sort of squeezes the life out of the prey before it kills them, right? Before it consumes them. Same thing. So when you go for the submission, your job when you're on top in side control, mount, back mount, knee on belly, all these different positions is to like literally squeeze the life out of the person, make it really terrible, so that eventually they just give you the submission. I'm gonna go through the move one more time for you guys, just to make sure you get a good angle on it. So again, we're here this time. We'll give you a little bit different angle here. So again. 
going underneath. I like to go underneath the elbow here. Sometimes if their arms are like this, you can go like this. Either way works. Just make sure you keep your arm out so it doesn't get tucked when you, and you get rolled. Walk, 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 walk. Again, you can bring the knee up immediately here or I really like to attack the key lock here just as a threat to bring the arms up together to defend. Once the arms are up there together defending, bring that knee up, slide the arm into or the foot into position, and we're ready to go. From here, if we start to attack this arm, he's probably going to de defend it this way. So a real simple way to attack this arm bar. Grab the top arm, move it, tuck it into your armpit. Other arm's free. When you go for this finish, lean on the solar plexus, walk the foot in front of the face, and sit back. From here, we've got both arms. There we go, okay, ready to finish. Guys, I hope that's helpful to you, and my, uh, the friend that sent the question from Reddit, I will send this video to you, so this way you can check it out. Um, but again, any of you guys that are looking for S-mount help or S-mount tips, I hope this is useful to you. I'm finished. Adam? Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you enjoyed the technique that we just showed you. Guys, if you're you know, new to the channel, I hope that you subscribe. If you're you know, a repeat viewer, I hope that you subscribe. Otherwise, why are you watching me and Adam show you techniques? Don't you want to come back and watch the techniques later? See, what they want me to do is they want me, they, I, I was told by this by someone, I'm supposed to tell you to subscribe to the channel and that you've got to click the notification bell. But I don't like doing that, right Adam? No, that's not our style. So instead, we're gonna do this video where we're gonna walk at you in this really awkward manner and ask you to subscribe for the notification bell without actually asking you to subscribe to the notification bell. Isn't that right, Adam? Adam. Mm-hmm. Hope to see you guys next time.